Hey guys, welcome back to our React Router project. I have the app running on port 3000, and the only thing I changed is I updated the minor version of React to 16.3, since that's a new version that came out just a few days ago. And before we move on to nested routes, let's first sort out a few problems in the application. So for now, if we go to Writer, we forgot to remove the match and the ID props because we no longer use them anymore. So let's remove those and nothing is going to change. Another issue that I found is if you go back to the browser and if you try typing a gibberish route, so for example, bogus, you're going to see that it doesn't load anything. Now the reason that happens, if you go back to the app and if we look at the route definition, what we basically have here is we have a route for the home page that basically just shows you home. And we also have routes for the writers, but we're not actually matching any other route that is not part of that list. Now in order to catch all of the other routes that do not match the slash, so the home path or the writers or anything that follows the writers, we could have another route component here. And to match anything else, what we basically do here is we basically omit the path property altogether. So if you wanted to match a specific route, you would pass that property in. And then you would pass in the value of the route that you would like to match. Now, if you want to match every possible route, then you omit the path property and you can simply provide either the component property, then you have to pass the component itself, or you could also pass in the render prop as you saw before. So we pass the render property. What we can do here is we can actually also include a closure function. And we can simply include a message. Let's put an H3 tags and let's say not found. Let's save that. Now, if I go back to the app, as you can see here, we are showing the not found message. So this is basically how you would handle a 404 error. Now, the only problem with that is if I go back to the main page, the home page, I'm also going to see the not found route. The reason that happens is of course, because the route, so the last route definition that we declared, it basically matches every single route regardless of what the path is. Now this is not a problem if we have a route that basically doesn't exist, that we don't have a definition for in the application, but what if it's writers, what if it's home, or what if it's a specific writer, we're always going to see that not found uh, message that we have over here in this route. Now, in order to alleviate that problem, what we can do here is we can actually wrap all those three routes with a switch. And the switch is actually a component that comes from React Router DOM. And the way it works is very similar to a normal switch in JavaScript. So what it's gonna do is, it's actually going to match the very first route going from top to bottom. And when it does match that route, it's going to ignore all of the other routes and it's actually only going to render that specific route that it was able to match. So for example, if we go to the home page, we are no longer showing the not found message because that route is not being matched. Now in the same note, we could also remove the exact property from the route. In this scenario, we're actually not going to see the writers on the home page because the switch is only going to take into consideration the very first route component that it sees and it's actually not going to parse all of the other ones. So you could remove that exact property that we had before. But of course this is going to not work for all of the other non-existing routes because if you go to something like bogus for example, you're not actually going to see the not found message. And like you probably know that's of course because this slash is basically treated as a prefix. So in this situation like I said, it's still better to bring back the exact prop. So this is going to match the exact home path and not anything else. So if we save that and we go back to the browser, I can refresh this page as you can already see we have this not found message over here because we are matching a route that we don't really have a definition for. So this would work sort of like a fallback route. Now what about writers? So for example if I go back to writers, let's click on Ralph Waldo Emerson, what if I were to change the path? So what if I were to type out something else? Let's say Jordan Peterson now we get this dash over here and supposedly it's rendering the writer component as well. And the reason that's happening is because we're trying to find the writer in the list of writers that we provide as a prop over here. We're actually trying to find that writer 
with the ID that's contained inside of the URL. Now, of course, that's not a valid ID, so we're not able to find anything in this expression returns undefined. Now, the component is still being rendered because we don't have any condition that would say, well, if there's no writer that we were able to find, well, let's do something else then. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm actually going to pass in a function, okay? In the end, what this function is gonna do is it's basically going to return the writer component, but before we do that, of course, we need to first try to get the writer, okay? So I'm going to have a constant, let's say, writer, so I'm going to try to find the writer, and I might or might not be able to do that. But in case we don't find a writer, so for example, the ID was invalid. In this case, what we can do here is we can actually redirect to, let's say, 404, okay? Now, the redirect is another component in React Writer DOM. What this component basically does is it allows you to, well, basically redirect to a given page. So in this example, this is a component in and of itself, so there's no magic in it. It's just a normal JavaScript component. But when it's being returned or when it's being executed or rendered, it's basically going to read the to prop that you pass and it's going to make a redirection. It's just basically going to update the URL without reloading the page. Now let's see this in action. So I'm going to save this file. Let's go back and it looks like we have an error here. I forgot to put in the writer. So what we're gonna do here is basically say, well, let's try to find the writer. If we do find the writer, we're going to expand out the properties of that writer. Otherwise, we're going to make a redirection to 404. Now, as you can see, we get 404. So again, if I type out, let's say, Jordan Peterson, we get not found. But if I go to an existing writer, of course, I'm able to see the details of that specific writer. Now, the only thing here, as you can see, there's a bit of inconsistency. So for example, if I were to go to slash test, we get not found, but we're not actually redirected to 404. But on the other hand, if I type out, let's say writers, like I said, Jordan Peterson, that's not a valid writer. We don't have this writer in our store. So we are redirected to a 404 page. Now, that's a bit of an inconsistency. It's basically up to you. It's kind of, it kind of depends on the application logic that you implement yourself. So for example, one thing you could do is, if you find a URL that's not a valid URL or the URL that you can't match within your application, you could make a redirection to a 404 page. And that's basically what we're doing here. And the other thing you could also do is you could simply return a message pretty much in the same way like we do in the app component. So for example, here we're just basically returning a, an H3 tag that contains the not found message. We could do the same thing over there as well. So if I go back to our Jordan Peterson over here, we get the not found message. And the added bonus is that you can also see the list of writers at the top. So you could actually navigate to one of the uh, existing or valid writers that we do have in the store. So I kind of prefer this latter approach. So instead of actually making a redirect, I'm actually going to keep the user on the same URL so that if they want to change that URL, they're actually going to be able to see that this is the URL that they typed out or went into, but this is not a valid URL, so they will have to change it. And I think it's a little bit better as far as user experience than just showing a or making a redirection to a 404 page. So what I'm actually going to do is inside of components, I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call it errors. And what I'll do is I'll create a new file. Let's call it 404.js. And this would basically import react from react because we always need to include that. And then we're going to do export default. It's going to be an anonymous function. And inside we can basically just return that not found message. Okay, we can save it. And we can actually start using it now. So what I'll do is I'll import not, sorry, not found from, let's go to errors. And this one would be 404. And what we can start doing is instead of having the render prop, we can actually have a component. And this one would be the not found component as you might've guessed. So I'm gonna close it out. And going back in here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So we're turning not found component. And of course I'll need to also import it. So not found from, let's go up, let's go to errors and 404, let's save it. Now if I refresh the page, as you can see here, we got the not found message. But if let's say I 
go to, let's say, test, I also get that message. So the behavior is now consistent. 